I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at Ultrabeat's sequencer. To discover that, not only is it a place where we can actually put notes together and build patterns, but actually we can create step offsets to automation. In other words, we can offset parameters within Ultrabeat as part of a pattern sequence, and that's amazingly powerful. To do that, what we're going to do first of all, you can see I've set up a new Ultrabeat instrument. And what I'm going to do is to select a preset, which I'm going to do by choosing one of the drum kits. And the one I've got in mind is right down at the bottom of the list, and it's called Vintage Machines. And what you'll notice when you first load an Ultrabeat um, kit is that as well as a bunch of sounds that I can now audition from my keyboard, let's come down an octave and I'll find the kick. As well as these, what I've also got is a pattern that I can see down at the bottom. You can see these individual sort of uh, steps for this kick drum that I've just selected. Now, at the moment, when I press play, we're not actually going to hear anything. Logic's running now, but nothing's playing live. But in order to hear the preset sequence that accompanies this Vintage Machines kit, all I've got to do is to turn on the power button for the sequencer. And now when I press play in Logic, this pattern will be generated on a loop. Now, of course, whilst that might be slightly inspiring, it also has its drawbacks. At the moment, all I've got to do is press play, the pattern starts in bar one, and it's going to play until I press stop. And of course, most of the time, that's not really what we want beats to do within our project. We might want to start much later on into the project before the beat loop arrives, or it could be that obviously we want a ready way of being able to stop it. So broadly, this kind of approach of just turning on the sequencer and hoping that the pattern's going to work for us isn't often going to uh, do the job. But let's see exactly how a pattern is constructed before we set about the process of creating one of our own and look to see what we can do by going beyond simply adding notes. So firstly, the sequencer down here at the bottom at the moment, as I said, if I select a drum, I can see the pattern for it. I can see that I've got up to 32 steps available to me. And if I click the full view button down here in the bottom right hand corner, rather than just looking at the kick, I can see all of the notes that are contributing to the pattern at the moment. We've got a little tom fill at the end, and I can see that those notes are assigned here right at the end. Now, if I decided that I liked the core pattern, but let's say I wanted to get rid of the closed hat, I could click on any of the closed hat notes, hit control and click on the pattern. And then what I can do is to hit clear. And what that will do is to delete an entire row of notes. That's getting rid of the entire closed hat pattern. If I actually want to get rid of the entire pattern so I can start from scratch, what I can do is to control click down here at the bottom and select clear. And what that's going to do is to erase the entire pattern. Let's suppose what I want to do is to start from scratch, but with a 16 note pattern rather than 32. Again, what I can do is just grab this little end point and bring it back so I'm only looking at 16 steps. And now to start building a pattern, I'm just going to put a loop around four bars. To start building a pattern, all I've got to do is to enter the notes where I want them. Now, I can do that in a couple of ways. If I do it down here at the bottom, I have a chance, as you can see as I move up and down, to vary the velocity and the gate length for each note. So effectively, there are four lengths of notes that I can select. So the widest note is going to be the longest note, whereas I can produce much shorter, spikier notes from a length perspective if I go to gate value one. So I'm literally just moving the mouse left and right to select the gate value that I want, and I'm moving it up and down to select the velocity that I want. So I thought a, a, a sort of proud, loud note on beat one, then no problem, I can do that. So I can go through quite quickly, varying not only the gate time, but also the velocity in order to produce a pattern. And what I'm going to do is just to produce something pretty straightforward as my sort of main uh, kick pattern. Let's listen to this. So we can hear the variation in velocity in particular. What I can then do is to add a second sound simply by coming down to, let's say, the snare. Now, the other way that I can add notes is simply to click into this main view grid. And if I select a note here, what's going to happen is that I'm going to get um, gate a gate value of um, four, uh, i.e. The, the longest note. And I'm going to see that the velocity is set here at about sort of 96, 97. So effectively, by going through, if I create patterns uh, or notes in this way, they're all going to be a uniform value. So if I want them to be at full volume, I'll have to come back down here and adjust them. So here we can effortlessly kind of add a snare pattern. And what I'm also going to do is just put in a little um, hat pattern as well. I'm going to do that down here because, again, I want variation. And what we'll do is just have a pattern sort of do something in mostly 16th notes for the closed hat.
Okay, so this snare pattern's nice, but if I decided I actually did want this hit to be on beat four, again, I can just simply switch off a note here and add a note here. So what I've now done is to create a sort of 16 note step sequence, but I've still got the same problem that I had before, which is that if I wanted to use this pattern using um, ultra beat step sequencer, at the moment I'm limited to the fact that sequences are either on or off. If it's off, I'm not gonna hear it. If it's on, it's gonna play all of the time. So what I want is a way of being able to transfer this into Logic as a sequence without the sequencer having to be on. And I can do that simply by grabbing this pattern button here. By clicking here and dragging this to the arrange window, I can take the pattern that I've made and I can drag it in as a single bar. I can then switch off the sequencer because effectively now I've got a MIDI note region which has been generated from the pattern sequencer within Ultrabeat. And because it's only a bar long, after that first bar, it stops. So I can put that region anywhere and effectively I've now got a beat loop which is happening in the way that I'd like it to. However, what I'm actually gonna do is to delete that and come back down to the sequencer because as well as note data, what I have a chance to do with Ultra Beat Sequencer, and this is why it's so powerful, is that I can add per voice step automation to any of the voices available to me. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm gonna close the full view down here for a second. And what I'm going to do is to come back to my snare drum, select this as my instrument. And I'm just taking a quick look around the interface to see how this sound is constructed. So I can see straight away that this snare is being triggered from a sample, which is down here. I can see that of the three different voices available to me with an ultra beat, only the sample is switched on. So effectively any changes that I make need to be to this area of the synth, um, or this uh, this voice, if you like, this area of this voice of um, ultra beat in order to produce some offsets. But how am I actually gonna write those into the project? Well, down here at the bottom, you can see that I'm at the moment looking at voices, this individual voice, this snare is called the voice in ultra beat. But if I come to the step option instead, what I can now see is all of the automatable parameters for this particular instrument. Anything in yellow, in theory, can be step sequenced. Now, why am I saying in theory? Well, remember what I said a moment ago, only voice, uh, the sampled voice down at the bottom is contributing to this sound at the moment. So if I decided, for instance, that what I wanted to do was to create an offset to the pitch for this first oscillator up here, I'm not gonna hear that because that oscillator isn't switched on for this sound. So what I need to do is just to make sure that I'm making an offset to something which is a part of the sound. So let's take, for instance, the pitch of the uh, sample down here. If I select step number 13, where I know my second snare is playing, what I can do is to move this offset here. And you'll see that within the step area down here, firstly, by moving that parameter, Ultra Beat has immediately detected that I use my mouse, and as a result, it's added this automation lane of the oscillator 2's pitch as a parameter available here. And I can see the offset that I've created here as well. So effectively, as a percentage of the original pitch, I have a chance to add this offset to this second step. Okay, and I've added a really extreme one so we can hear that really clearly. Let's make it a bit less extreme so we've got a tiny bit or a much less detune now on this second hit. Okay, now let's suppose that what I wanted to do was to add a different type of automation to um, the first snare within my sequence. I'm gonna click on this first one here. And what I'm gonna do is to select the envelope um, amplifier here, um, over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to change the decay time. And by doing that, you can see that I've, I'm in a position to pull this note down dramatically in terms of its length. Now, envelope four is routed through to the amplifier. So this should control the length of the snare. And again, having introduced this parameter, if I want to make an adjustment not over here to the decay time on this little um, envelope 
uh, assignment as we can see it here, obviously I'm just in a position to grab this here. Now, again, if I wanted to move back to the other automation that I've added to the snare lane, all I've got to do is just drop now into the um, this little uh, drop down sort of selector and I can see the two things that I've added. Now, the thing that's obviously really powerful here is that I don't have to just restrict myself to the um, snare. If I was, for instance, to come to the closed hi-hat, I know that I've got notes, I can see where they are within this, um, this region and at the moment I don't have any parameters for this closed hi-hat. Remember, Ultra B isn't one instrument, it's a group of different voices. So I've got automation available to every single sound within my kit. So again, if I wanted um, to, let's say, again, maybe change the uh, decay time for the um, individual steps of my sequence, again, I can do that. And having introduced the parameter here, what I can then do would be to go through and note where I've got individual voices. I can make shorter notes by dragging downwards, and I can make longer um, offsets to uh, the length of these hi-hats by dragging upwards. So I'm in a position simply just to create little offsets wherever I like in order to create a slightly techier sounding hi-hat whenever the note gets shorter and something a little bit more full when it's longer. Okay, we can obviously solo out a voice in order to hear it. You'll see that any note that has been sequenced with step sequencing in the way that we're um, sort of adding these lanes of automation data is going to be down here um, on the to the right hand side of the actual voice name. You'll see it just says SQ in yellow, and that's a really nice little way of being able to see immediately which voices have had um, automation data added to them. And the really cool thing about this is that if I now grab the pattern in exactly the same way that I did before I put it into the arrange page and I turn the sequencer off, it's going to retain all of that step information as well. So there's our one bar sequence now not just containing notes but also this kind of step automation as well. So what we've learned within this video is that actually the parameters available within Ultrabeat are incredibly powerful when it comes to step sequencing. Not only can we build patterns of notes as we can within Logic's own step sequencer, but we can add this automation, which means that I could change anything. We've obviously looked at envelope routing and we've looked at pitch offsets, but I could vary the amount of LFO applied to an oscillator. I could vary the amount of filter change from one note to another as well. So if you're looking for a way of being able to add really interesting beat sequences, not just with notes, but with timbral changes too, make sure you check this out.